Welcome to Monetized History. My name is Daniel, and today we're going to be talking about mint marks, effigies, and the anatomy of a coin. All coins have two sides. These sides are known as the obverse and the reverse. The terms come from Latin and mean to turn towards and to turn backwards, respectively. Each country has their own rules about what must be on the reverse and obverse of their coins. For instance, most monarchies require a portrait of their monarch on the obverse. Traditionally, the coin's denomination is stamped on the reverse, but exceptions exist, such as the post-1998 U.S. quarter dollars, which moved the denomination to the obverse to make room for larger designs on the reverse. The so-called third side of the coin is known as the edge. The edge can have a number of different designs. Coins with a low face value tend to have plain edges like the U.S. nickel, or grooved edges like the two euro cents. Other coins have reeded edges, like the Canadian 25 cents. Some coins, like the Colombian 500 pesos, have a combination of plain and reeded edge. Chilean 100 pesos have inscriptions on the edges, and German marks have designs engraved along the edge. All of these edges were designed to do two things, make the coins harder to counterfeit, and prevent people from shaving away parts of the coin to collect its precious metal. Around the edge of the faces of the coin is its rim, it's slightly raised above the other design elements to slow the wearing away of the design and to allow for easier stacking. Just inside the rim, some coins have design elements known as beading or denticles. Beading is a series of dots just inside the rim of the coin. Denticles, which comes from the Latin word for tooth, are projections which extend from the rim of the coin. The faces of the coin can be divided into two general parts, the field, or flat background surface of the coin, and the relief, or raised design elements. The relief also divides into two general elements, the inscriptions, or any writing on the coin, and the devices, the principal graphical elements on each side of the coin. The primary inscriptions on a coin are known as legends and are typically inscribed along the outer edge of the coin. Legends can take nearly any form, but for most coins, it's the name of the country or issuing bank. For many monarchies, the name of the current ruling monarch is also part of the legend. In the case of the United Kingdom, however, the name of the country is not mentioned. Almost all modern coins will have the denomination as one of its inscriptions, usually on the reverse. The vast majority of all countries use numerals to represent the value of their currency to accommodate for illiteracy. Some countries, such as the United States and the United Kingdom, spell out the denominations on their coins instead. Many countries put their national motto on their coins as well. The U.S. is unusual in that it puts two mottos on its modern coins. Dates, mint marks, and assayer marks have been on coins for over 1,000 years. Dates show when a coin was put into circulation. Mint marks show where the coin was minted, and assayer marks show who verified the amount of precious metal in the coin. Today, only mint marks and dates remain, and they are mostly maintained for tradition. Historically, these marks were used to find the source of errors in the minting process. If a coin was found to be underweight, the date, mint mark, and assayer mark could determine who was responsible for the error. This happened in 1649 when the assayer in Potosi, Bolivia, Felipe Ramirez de Arellano, was executed along with many others for debasing the coins from the Potosi mint. The device of a coin can take nearly any form. Some of the most common devices on coins are portraits. Monarchs, heads of state, current and former, National heroes and allegories are most common. Most countries feature their coat of arms on at least one denomination. Many coins have their denomination as the device. Other common devices include plants, animals, and monuments. The reverse of the plastic Transnistrian coins are patterned, making it hard to say whether or not they even have a device. That's all for today. I hope you learned something new. What are some of your favorite coin designs? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe.